And now a moment with Dr. Stephen M. Stahl. Is off-label prescribing best practice or malpractice? Is off-label prescribing best practice or malpractice? Depends on who you talk to. But I think actually it's usually best practice. Here's the point. Off-label means not on the label written by the drug companies for the Food and Drug Administration. That is what the label is. You know those pages in the PDR, that big thing you uh, use to keep your door open or something like that? That big book in the tiny font, which you need almost a Sherlock Holmes magnifying glass to read, that is the label. Very few people read a label. It's difficult, but we look things up and look at parts of the labels all the time. Well, the label is actually to restrict, if you will, or to actually inform or guide the sale of medicines. It is not a textbook. It does not inform or dictate the practice of medicine. So we can use that information to tell us what are the most evidence-based approvals for medications in our field. That's good. But do you know that something like 80% of psychiatric disorders don't have a psychopharmacological treatment that's approved? And even those disorders for which there's an approved treatment in psychiatric practices, most of the people are not in the label anyway. Why is that? Because they're either treatment resistant, which is excluded from labels almost in all cases, it might be people that are older than the label studied, younger than the label studied. Maybe they're pregnant or at risk for pregnancy. Uh, various things are excluded from labels. So in the real world, you don't actually have all the guidelines you need in order to practice. And so we have to treat real patients that aren't covered by labels in the real practice. So what do we want to do? The answer is know the evidence that does exist whether it's on the label or in the literature or case reports. And in some cases, the lowest level of evidence, which is still considered evidence, is expert opinion. So you use that information to tailor and design a personalized approach for a patient. You certainly start with a label, but what if the patient uh, doesn't respond to what's in the label? Or what if the patient doesn't exist in the label? Because there's off-label patients as well as off-label uh, prescribing. In that case, you actually play Indiana Jones. Uh, you make it up as you go. And how do you make it up as you go? You know the evidence that's out there. You use that evidence and you apply that evidence. You know, psychiatrists are usually pretty good at making personalized medicine and applying that to individual patients. The problem we're getting into is that some of the payers are saying, if it's not in the label, you can't use the drug. It's a way to restrict use of medications to save costs, but not to be best practices. So in summary, what I would say is that if you know the label and you practice it when you can, but in addition, you actually personalize medication for real patients based on the best evidence available, then that's best practices.